Today we're going to paint some clear transparent glass and I provide a photograph for you and let's walk through it. All right, let's get started. Here's the photograph that you can use. This is a photograph that I took and you can screen capture it and use it yourself. What's really important about transparent glass as I'm understanding it is to have an object nearby that will produce some color in the uh, clear glass. That's somewhat helpful. I could have put an apple there, an orange, you know, something that was brightly colored. Doesn't matter. And, and also, you could also put it outside your, your picture frame as well, and the light will travel into the object. But still, we're dealing with grays. You know, the challenge here is that the whole object, meaning that, that uh, cup, is uh, all one value pretty much. And I'm always talking about value, you know, finding your lightest lights and your darkest darks. But what you still have to do in this case, but it's all relative. So the first thing that I do, because I don't use any kind of um, white out or masking fluid, is I put a little bit of Naples yellow in those places where I knew I wanted to leave them as looking as if they're white. And then I got busy with the um, with starting to make grays. That background gray was the darkest gray that I could see. And I used three colors for that. I use a permanent rose, a cerulean blue, and Naples yellow. Now I'm using my finger to show me where else I might find shapes that are that same color that I used in the background. And I found some of them, but, but they weren't consistent. I mean, part of them would start as that color, but then it would quickly transform into another color. So I had to bend it a little bit to be a little bit redder in a way. I would add a little bit of rose and maybe a little bit more Naples yellow to that gray. So I'm sort of taking that original gray and constantly looking at the image, squinting my eyes to see where is it warmer and lighter. If it's warmer and lighter, then I'm going to use that gray and add some red and maybe some Naples yellow to it so it leans more toward rose and oranges. And if I see it getting uh, darker and a little bit cooler, then I'm going to go a little bit towards cerulean blue, or even uh, I found some, strangely enough, I found some greenish spots in there. And for those, I use cerulean blue and a little bit of Naples yellow. But, you know, it's still all relative. These are, these are all, I would say, um, all of my colors here are probably a value of, um, I'm going to say maybe th th three or four, maybe four and a half at the most. And so it really wasn't about value. Well, of course it's about value. I mean, everything's about value. value. But where I really was able to, I think, show transparency was any time there was a temperature change. And I had to squint really hard in order to find that, squinting my eyes and looking. The other thing I had to do is compensate for the photograph. Photographs are always going to look darker um, in the shadow areas than they are in real life. So I had the, the cup nearby, and I was able to look at that. And I've been spending a lot of time looking at objects, which is really helpful. So I could bring that knowledge to this exercise today. The whole point that I'm trying to get across with this transparent object is I want to get in all my grays first. Then I'll add the saturated colors, which will be the lollipop and then that vase behind the cup. But in order to do that, for this to read as transparent, then I have to be really accurate about all the different grays that I mixed and how they, um, how they relate to each other. Not letting anything get too dark, you know, and not letting anything get too light. I'm trying to stay in that three, and, three to four value range, which I have a pretty good feel for now. Now, down at the bottom of the cup, there were a couple of places I could see some real saturation, and that's going to look even more saturated, meaning brighter color because of the grays, and I wanted to show those. It's just when you, if you print out the photograph, you'll see where those are. But again, they're, they're somewhat muted because they're reflections. They're not, they're not solid objects. You know, I won't get really saturated until I get to the solid object, which is going to be the lollipop. That's where I use my most saturated color. Not my darkest color, but my most saturated, meaning the brightest, you know, with the least amount of gray in it. And because I've surrounded, I will have surrounded that um, lollipop with everything that is a, basically a variation of gray, it's going to make that uh, red, reddish lollipop look even redder. And that's my goal. My goal is to make the uh, the the gold. Uh, my goal is to make that cup um, important because that's what I'm interested in painting. But um, ultimately, the star of the show I think might be the lollipop. I'm not sure. 
but in my mind it was because it was the most saturated so it took the most uh, commanded the most attention so I have to be I have to concentrate really hard to do this and I have to um, be doing a lot of mixing on the side sometimes I have to mix a lot of paint just for like one tiny little area like that area that just went in there was um, slightly greenish you know it's so small an area but but it really matters those variations of gray really matter I'm using Arsh cold press paper um, on a watercolor block and the brush I'm using is uh, about one one inch I think it's almost one and one and a quarter inches wide maybe one inch wide but it's a wide brush for this amount of space and the reason I'm doing that is I want to simplify the shapes as much as I can I want to um, spend as much time as I can on mixing and being and, and strategy and almost almost no time actually painting which sounds weird but you know that's my goal that doesn't have to be your goal but it's something I'm fascinated with because uh, I like to create an optical illusion there's something about painting that that appeals to me because it is an optical illusion you're, you're using a flat piece of paper some water a little bit of pigment and, and creating an image on a piece of paper that will um, will uh, uh, represent something but I want to use as big shapes as possible because I want it to be as abstract as as possible as well because this is a painting it's not a photograph and I want it to look like a painting not a photograph so my, my goal is not photorealism and you know if that's your goal then um, you know you'll find a different channel for you um, but the basic painting um, what do you call it instruction and, and strategy is still the same it's still such um, grade color all basically one value looking for where it bends into warmer and then where it blends into cooler tones and then once that gets accomplished really going at the solid uh, object this is a solid object now that lollipop I'm gonna hit it really hard and I think think I come back and hit it even harder yeah you know that's just so satisfying but it wouldn't be a satisfying moment if I hadn't spent the careful time um, sort of calibrating and making the other decisions that I did about the gray cup. Now, the other thing about this is, you know, this is kind of new to me, painting glass. And I not that I haven't painted glass before, but I'm painting the shapes through the glass. You, you'll see there are almost no lines, there are almost no outlines. I'm trying to make the forms um, flow into each other. I'm trying to not show any lines. I'm trying to show only where one shape molds or mel melts into another shape that's that's my goal at this stage of my life and so um, now it's time for this glass object behind which is not as saturated as the lollipop certainly more saturated than the cup but not as saturated as the lollipop so I had to gray it down a little bit graying it down a little bit means adding uh, the complement complementary color to it so it's not as vibrant as that lollipop but I'm gonna have to go back and and uh, you know, every time you make a decision in painting, then you have to make another decision, you know, because it's all connected. Um, the foundation is in pretty good now, and I feel I feel a lot positive about that. But because I've now been painting, oh, by now this has been almost 45 minutes on this thing, because I, had, I haven't shown you how much time it took me to, to um, what do you call it, mix each one of the colors. So it takes quite a bit of time, and by now the foundation is in, and now it's we're really down to what I think of as the fun part, which is finishing touches. And so in order to do finishing touches, I'm probably going to have to make some adjustments. I'm happy about where it is right now, but I, I get that feeling that I haven't brought it home yet, and I do want to bring it home. Now the temptation is to forget that I'm looking at a photograph and to get those really dark darks in. Um, underneath that colored vase there's another really dark dark on the rim of the cup but if I do that then all my calibrations up to this point won't work you know I decided that everything was basically you know like I said around in the four and a half three and a half to four range maybe at the most four and a half and if I violate that now then every other decision I made up until this point will be violated so I have to really be careful although it's crazy tempting really crazy tempting um, 
And sometimes what you have to do is you have to walk away, you know, maybe walk away, get a drink of water or, you know, clean your water, whatever you need to do. I mean, your water, clear, clean your rinse water, anything you need to do to get your concentration back. Because, you know, by this time I've spent an hour and like I said, and, and you can start to be, um, you can start to lose your concentration and make decisions that are great for instant gratification, but, but don't follow your original plan. And and can make the whole thing crumble in on itself. And I can't tell you how many times I've done that. Oh, probably a million, you know, and live to regret it. And as you know, with watercolor, there's, you, you, you can't, can't, you can't go back. You know, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, throw some white paint over it and, and, and uh, paint over a mistake. You know, by this time, if you go ahead and make a mistake, there's a little bit of wiggle room. There's always a little bit of wiggle room. If you make something, if you want something to look like it was lighter, you know, which was your intention, you can still darken around where you wanted it to be lighter. But again, it's all relative to every decision that has been made up till now. So I don't have the sophistication or the confidence to be able to do that. So I had to, um, to follow the plan from the very beginning and not deviate. And, you know, that takes discipline and it also takes a lot of practice of painting over time. And telling myself it's just a painting it's just a painting it's just a painting all right now i've gone away um dried everything and come back this is where it was so tempting to go really dark because the photograph looks really dark on the base of that um pink object but again i know that the photograph is not true to real life i know that from looking at these objects so i have to be really careful and sneak up on things slowly but I'm going to anchor in that vase pretty well, which I think I did in the end. And then there are just some small things. There's a lot of editing going on here, too, because you can start to look at glass and you're going to see a million things. And what I want to do is not see a million things. I want to look at the things that were most important that I put in at the very beginning. Those are the important things. The rest is just, you know, um, like decorations on a, on a cake. But if the foundation of the cake is, isn't any good, then everything will fall apart. So the temptation at this point, I can't tell you how big the temptation is, but resist it if you can. You know, the other place it looks darker in the photograph is right, um, you know, it's tempting to put a dark shadow um, underneath that cup. But if you look at the cup and squint, you'll see there's a lot of yellow in that, um, in that shadow. You know, sometimes shadows start out a little bit darker and then they get, they get quite a bit lighter. So I had to be really careful about that. So like I said, there's a lot of observation here, a lot of practice. There's a lot more practice that I want to do, but I really am having a, a fun time. And if you're interested in painting glass, go ahead and use a photograph and, um, and do it. So remember, keep the whites of your paper white, your paint wet, master value mix for color. Please join this YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.